All right, so we got the boys together and we're doing another review. We're doing the stuff. Thanks for tuning in to Stream of Consciousness, folks. It's gonna be good. Here we go. Also gonna be eating my spaghetti dinner. That tastes real good. Hi, my name is Frankfurt, Delaware. Larry Cohen. Man, this guy's got a great style. A strong, independent filmmaker, and I really do love this guy. Kid goes down in the middle of the night to go take a peek in the fridge, get a little snack, a little sip of juice, something, milk, you know? Something's oozing in the refrigerator, like out of a yogurt or milk carton, and it's like, he's like, whoa. Instantly, when Michael Morality comes to the picture in this film, it's like he lights up the screen. That's just what he pawned. That's just what he pawned. Nice movie. Don't eat that. There's nothing wrong with it. I had some last night. Well, the movie stuff is as strange as an old-timey gas station and about as weird as you can get with a sense of humor. This is for sure a really cool um, comedy horror movie. I'm, I'm digging this a lot. Michael Morality, the detective keen to what's going on with the whole stuff stuff that's being marketed like yogurt man the stuff's good pretty unique film it doesn't take itself too seriously but has a smart way of doing things and it's a pretty cute and funny kind of random film you know what it is even if you think you don't herbert master frame here with a real sweet treat part alien goo movie Part paranoid conspiracy about some horrific pablum, the masses mistake for real brain food that ends up eating them from the inside out. Sound familiar? In this case, it's an innocuous looking creamy organic foam akin to mom's tub of yogurt, only this stuff has a sinister life of its own. Dad's hooked on it, brother and mother too, they're all consumed by it. Their youngest son, however, a young, fresh-faced fella by the name of Jason, is a smart kid. He knows what not to do, and that is follow authority, especially not what his parents tell him. So while they sit around shoveling spoonfuls of rapidly growing and slowly flowing viral-like ice cream into their average American pie holes, this kid Jason is quietly suspicious of the latest media sensation. He doesn't believe the hype, and it turns his once loving family against him. One night, our free-thinking boy pulls a quick one on his old man. He comes downstairs, happily smacking his lips with a container of the stuff in his hand. The family seems satisfied with his change of heart. But Jason, being a bright-eyed trickster, pulls a classic April Fool's joke on mean old dad. The stuff has been replaced with shaving cream, and it almost works, but Dad, being both suspicious and devoted to his demise, takes a bite. The stuff. It's everywhere, like invisible cootie ghoulies, like subatomic particles, like an ozone gone full hole. His family chase him down their neighborhood street, but just in the cinematic nick of time, a car pulls up and he jumps in. Behind the wheel is the dashing Michael Moriarty with a mellow southern drawl, playing a former FBI agent hired by the ice cream industry to investigate the mysterious addictive substance that is outselling their creamsicles. It's good fun rooting for these two sly, handsome rogues as they defy the powers that be, that is, the conforming family unit and the saccharine propaganda machine spreading the stuff as a cure for those hunger pangs of the soul. Along the way, there is a host of archetypal characters caught up in the madness. The brave and honorable, reliably low-key sexist and racist, egotistical militiaman, Colonel Spears, played by the likable Paul Sorvino. There's Chocolate Chip Charlie, a cocoa crispy elfin fast talker, also in the business of peddling addictive junk. 
played by Garrett Morris. He's the hip liberal who's prepared to tell the people the truth about the stuff on the radio, but little too late as he proves to be digesting the stuff poorly himself, a thoroughly vacated premise of a human being. Alas, poor Charlie. And there's Nicole Kendall, who bears witness to Charlie's head exploding with goo, the good-looking marketer who sells the stuff out the wazoo, but realizes the error of her ways and teams up with the boys to stop it at the source. I'll say no more other than it's B-movie brilliance that reveals old habits die hard, namely swallowing tasty bullshit and obeying our master's orders, even if it's well-packaged and satisfying. I give it four big spoons and a taste of its own medicine. It was Engelbert, Master Frame. Seriously, cut it out, Joey. You know, Butterfuko, Mana. You know, guy from Bull House. It's pretty decent. <laughs> It really is pretty, pretty good. It's kind of stony and out there, so that's my two cents. Engelbert. <laughs> that's right. I liked it pretty well. It was a pretty cool flick. Good job, Larry Cohen. I'm Engelbert Masterframe. Ah, 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 ah. That's how you do it. <laughs>